Hi, I'm Mike. I'm the founder of GoodBed.com. As you may know, GoodBed is a mattress shopping resource that is designed to help make it easier for you to search and compare mattresses across brands and stores to make sure that you find the best mattress for you. Today, we're excited to be here to review a product, which is called the Lisa Mattress. And we are particularly excited to review this product because uh, since coming on the scene a few years ago, 2014, uh, along with a few other companies, they've really been instrumental in bringing a lot of new attention to the idea of buying a mattress online, as well as just attention to the mattress industry in general. So that's been fun, and uh, we're looking forward to showing you this product. So one of the things that we believe here at GoodBed is that in order to choose the right mattress for you, you need personalized information. Uh, so when we talk about the Lisa mattress, we're not only going to talk about kind of how it compares to some of the other options you'll find online as well as in some of your nearby stores, but we're also going to talk about kind of who are the types of people for whom this is going to be a good match so that you can determine whether this is the right mattress for you. So the first thing most people want to know uh, about a mattress that they are going to buy without trying is how soft it is. You know, what does it feel like? Well. Um, in terms of comfort level or softness level, um, we kind of think of things as on a spectrum between sort of very firm and very soft. And we would put this one right smack dab in the middle as a medium. Um, to give you a couple other reference points, uh, something like the Casper, we would classify as more of a medium firm. Something like the Novos bed, for example, we would put that more like a medium soft. All of these companies say that their products are a happy medium, but this one actually we really do call a medium straight up. So before we dive into the attributes of this mattress that help determine whether it's a good fit for you or not, let's just take a second to talk about what's in this mattress. Uh, what you're looking at here is a 10 inch mattress uh, with three layers. The top layer is what they call Avena foam and I'll talk about each of these a little bit more in a second when I cut it open and give you a, a look at it. Uh, the middle layer is a gel memory foam and the bottom layer is a polyurethane core. So now let's just take a look at these and I'll tell you a little bit more about them. All right, so what we're gonna do here is just cut this thing open. Uh, what, what you see here, we've already peeled back the cover, which actually zips right off. Uh, this here is a fire sock, so we're gonna just cut through this. We obviously do not recommend that you do this yourself at home uh, because this would, uh, for one thing, be a, a, a health risk in terms of uh, the fire safety aspect, but also uh, I'm sure it would invalidate your, your warranty, so um, we're doing it for you. Um, and basically what we're going to just do this for is so that we can take a peek at these layers of the Lisa mattress. Okay, so what you're seeing here is this top layer is the Avena foam, and this is a 3.6 pound uh, density foam here, and this is this is the foam that I described as having very latex-like properties. As you can see, I squeeze this foam and it just springs instantly back to its original position. That's a very latex-like foam. I mean, regular polyurethane foam does not spring back this quickly, and certainly memory foam does not spring back this quickly. And as you can see, here is the memory foam. So you can, you can see how the memory foam is much slower to react than the uh, Avena foam. And then down at the bottom, this is the uh, polyurethane base foam. So this is the 1.8 pound density base foam here. And uh, that's a pretty standard density uh, for, a, for a base core uh, in a foam mattress. Uh, the memory foam, by the way, this is a three pound density foam. So it's a little lower density than, than what you'd find uh, in some memory foams, particularly when the memory foam is up near the, closer to the surface of the mattress. Um, and the other thing I wanted to point out, because uh, it will come up later in the uh, temperature regulation section, is the Avena foam has these pin core holes in the top. But this is also something that latex is, is known for. Latex always comes with these pin core holes. Um, and what they've done in addition to that in the Avena foams is they've actually given the bottom this convoluted egg crate surface, as you can see here. And the reason they do that is to create additional ways for air to flow through the mattress. So the combination of the pin core holes coming in from the top and these convoluted, uh, this convoluted shape on the bottom allows air to travel in here and out the top or vice versa as you 
press on the mattress. Okay, so when we talk about finding the right fit for you, we start with the two absolutely non-negotiable things that you have to get from your mattress, which are back support and pressure relief. So in terms of the back support of a mattress, what you're really trying to achieve is proper spinal alignment while you're laying down in, in, through the night. So what we mean by that is that your spine should be in the same position when you are sleeping as it is when you are standing, essentially which means that on your back, it has to have that proper curvature, that lumbar curve, and then on your side, it should just be dead straight. Okay, so let's just take a look at how this does for me in terms of the spinal alignment. I'm gonna start in this position because back, uh, on my back is the position I'm primarily in when I'm sleeping. Uh, and just for context, I'm six feet tall and not quite 200 pounds. And as you can potentially see here, uh, my spine is in a pretty neutral position here. Um, this de definitely kind of falls in the range of what tends to be a good fit for me. I tend to be, my needs tend to be right down the middle in terms of back support. So this is, uh, this is a good fit for me. One of the things I noticed right away is that um, the, the mattress is able to kind of reach up here into this curve in my back and support my, my lumbar area, which also is telling me that um, it's allowing my hips to sink just enough into the mattress to, uh, so that that can happen, uh, but not so much that I'm getting any kind of hammocking effect. Um, I'm going to roll over onto my side and just kind of show you how it does in that position. Um, and one of the other unique things I notice here, and this is true with a couple other mattresses that, um, that feature this kind of uh, latex-like layer on top with a memory foam underneath it, is that you can kind of roll over onto your side and it's, there's a, a little bit of an added delay. Memory foam always has a little bit of a delayed effect, but in these cases it's even an added delay where it takes a little time for the heat from your body to kind of make it through that latexy kind of top layer to the memory foam and, and take effect on that memory foam. And so that as you start to st stay in that position for you know, 30 seconds to a minute, you start to feel just a little bit of like that memory foam taking effect where the heat is reacting with the memory foam and, and you're seeing compression happening. And that allows you to actually kind of get into the position that you really want to be on your side, which is where your shoulders are allowed to penetrate a little more deeply into the mattress as well as your hips so that those curves can be accommodated and your spine can stay straight. And so that's what's happening here is that like my spine is in a very straight neutral position on my side as well. So what I'm experiencing on this mattress, and I don't spend a lot of time on my side when I sleep, uh, but my sus what I suspect is that if I did, if I were a side sleeper, this would be just fine for me in terms of back support. So in terms of maybe who this mattress is not an ideal match for from a back support standpoint, I mentioned that my needs are kind of right down the middle. And I'd say in general, this is a good match back support wise for most people who are in that kind of middle ground. Who I might watch out for would be people who maybe who are uh, significantly heavier than me, particularly if you're a stomach sleeper. What you'd be watching out for in that case is that perhaps your hips could sink a little too deeply into the mattress, in which case you get kind of that hammocking effect. And if you, sleep, if you sleep on your stomach, that's particularly bad because if you can imagine, your back overarching in that position is a surefire recipe for back pain. Likewise, I might worry a little bit if you're significantly lighter than me and a side sleeper. Because in that situation, you may find that your hips aren't able to sink quite deeply enough into this mattress in which case you end up with kind of the opposite effect, more like this, which is also not a good situation from a back support standpoint. So the next thing we want to talk about is pressure relief. And the best position for anyone to assess the pressure relief of a mattress is actually on your side. And the reason for that is because on your side, your weight is distributed over the smallest surface area. So when you're on your side, you want to kind of pay particular attention to your shoulders, and your hips because they're bearing the, uh, a disproportionate uh, portion of your weight uh, because they're penetrating the deepest into the mattress. Um, so as I lay on this mattress, I could say that uh, this pre the pressure relief is good and it actually, as I mentioned, there's that delayed 
uh, effect where the memory foam kicks in kind of 30 seconds later. Um, and that definitely helps with the pressure relief. However, it's not maybe as good as it would be, for example, with just a traditional memory foam mattress where that memory foam layer is right up at the top. But overall, for me, as I mentioned, I'm predominantly a back sleeper, so I spend some time during the night, of course, on my side, uh, but it's not the vast majority uh, of my time. And so I've never had any trouble with pressure relief or pressure points on this mattress in this position. Um, but in general, I would say that if pressure points are of a, a major concern, you can do better in terms of pressure relief than this mattress, but, but overall the pressure relief is good. Um, and uh, in terms of who this might not be a good fit for pressure relief wise, I would again kind of go to people who are um, either significantly lighter than me and sleep on their side perhaps, where they're, maybe they're not going to um, uh, penetrate deeply enough and they're not going uh, to, this, this isn't going to feel soft enough perhaps. Um, or again at the opposite end of the spectrum if you are uh, way way heavier than me in which case you might run the risk of kind of bottoming this thing out where you you kind of your shoulders and, and hips would go to the bottom of the the, the two soft top, top layers of the mattress. Um, but I think that that's a pretty broad range there where, where in the middle you have a lot of people who'd be pretty well served from a, from a pressure relief standpoint on this mattress. Okay, so now that we've got back support and pressure relief covered, we can now start to get into some of the other properties of the mattress that are a little bit more preference based that will determine whether this mattress is the right fit for you. The first one that I would start with is the responsiveness, which is kind of our fancy term for um, how much memory feel does it have? Um, so this one is kind of interesting and, and the reason I'm starting with it is because um, this one is a little bit of a hybrid in that regard. Um, you have on the top, as we discussed, this sort of latex-like layer, that two-inch layer of a vena foam, and then below that you have actual gel memory foam. And so when you just kind of do real lightly on this mattress or just kind of poke your fingers on it, you see it, it responds real quickly because I'm not getting deep enough where I'm actually hitting the memory foam. So this is a very latex-like experience and, and anytime you're in a position where a, a part of your body is, is not penetrating deeply, like maybe the way your ankles would uh, be on the mattress or, um, or your elbows, you're, you're probably just going to be in this latexy kind of fluffy layer here. Um, if you, uh, your heaviest parts though are definitely going to make their way into this deeper layer and you, as you can see as I push down with some real pressure on the mattress I can activate that slow response memory foam layer and you see the mattress springs back slowly. So it is a, a real kind of interesting hybrid. Um, overall you know it's, it's not a mattress that has a whole lot of bounce but there is some as you can see there. Um, I mean, if this were an all latex mattress, for example, there would be a lot more bounce than that. Or for that matter, if this were a spring mattress. Um, but on the flip side, if this were a memory foam mattress, I would land with just kind of a thud. There'd be no uh, response at all. It would just be dead. So that's kind of where this falls. I'd say in this, from the standpoint of as you're sleeping on it um, or touching it, it has a little bit more um, fast response feel, but uh, from the standpoint of big movements, it has more of that memory feel. So another thing you're going to want to consider when choosing a mattress is cushioning depth. And what we mean by that is that some people tend to prefer sleeping more in their mattress, where they get that feeling of being kind of cradled by their mattress. Um, and some people more like the sensation of just being right on top of their mattress, almost floating above it even. Um, and so mattresses can offer each of those characteristics depending on what your preferences are. This particular mattress we would characterize as somewhere right exactly dead in the middle on that. Um, so as you can see when I lay back on this, um, I'm definitely not uh, you know, totally above the mattress and I'm definitely not also sinking deep into the mattress, but I, there's like you know, kind of just a moderate amount to which I'm uh, sinking into the mattress, and that's the reflection of kind of a medium level of cushioning here. 
Okay, so we're just going to do a quick test here to kind of give you a little bit better sense of the cushioning depth. What I'm showing here is a 30 pound medicine ball. And I'm just going to put it here right next to this orange string. And that way you can just sort of get a sense of how much cushioning depth this is. If you look at some of the other videos we do, um, we, we use the same ball so that you have a frame of reference and can compare um, how the cushioning depth compares across mattresses. So the next thing you might want to consider is motion isolation. And what we mean by that is uh, how well does this mattress isolate you on this side of the mattress from disturbances or activity that's happening over here on this side of the mattress. So this might be of concern to you if, for example, you're a light sleeper or your partner is and the other of you maybe is restless sleeper uh, or if perhaps uh, you have kids or pets kind of joining you during the night. Um, so what you have here in, in terms of this being a, a foam, an all foam construction, that right there already makes this generally pretty good from, motion, from a motion isolation standpoint. Um, and then having that memory foam layer in the middle enhances that even further. The weak point, if there is any here, is this Avena layer on top. But overall, the, the point elasticity of the Avena layer is quite high. So as you can see, I'm poking down on the, on the Avena layer and not much of, you know, even a foot away or so, the, the, I can't feel really much of anything uh, happening in that. So, in general, this is going to have very good motion isolation, but we'll do a little test here in a second just to give you a demonstration of that. So to test the motion isolation properties of this mattress, uh, we put this together where we have just a standard bowling pin sitting on a, a small piece of tempered glass just to give it a surface to, to uh, rest on. And then what I'm going to do is just kind of uh, press down with some moderate pressure on this other side of the mattress and just watch to see what impact it has on the bowling pin. Um, bear in mind that we have this mattress on a, a platform foundation, which is uh, a, a, a plywood with slats going across. And there's a little bit of give and flex in that. And that is going to have some impact on the motion isolation of, of, uh, of any mattress. Um, but as you can see, generally speaking, the bowling ball isn't really, uh, the bowling pin isn't really moving much. And I can sort of um, use the bowling pin as a proxy for my uh, light sleeping uh, spouse and I can kind of jump into bed and, and as you can see uh, my spouse did not tip over. So another thing that you may want to consider when buying a mattress is temperature. So um, this is an issue that comes up a lot in mattress marketing these days is sleeping cool. Uh, the reality is that unless you're someone who kind of has a propensity to sleep warm, um, you're not likely to have a lot of issues on this front. Um, but being that this is a mattress that does have some memory foam in it and being that uh, memory foam is the material that's kind of been most well known for creating heat issues, I think it's worth addressing here. And I also think it's, it's worth noting that Lease has taken some efforts with this particular mattress to make sure that the memory foam in their mattress doesn't cause any heat issues for those who are prone to them. Uh, specifically, what they've done here is Number one, they've put the memory foam two inches down in the mattress, so it's not up close to your body, um, and it's not going to be the layer that is closely conforming to your body and preventing more of your body's surface from accessing the air. Uh, but, but number two, the benefit of having it down a layer is that on top of that memory foam layer is, that is a layer of this Avena foam. And the Avena foam has a few properties that help dissipate heat issues. Um, first of all, it's a latex-like material, and latex is known to have less of these heat-related issues than memory foam, so that's a good start. But second of all, like latex, the Avena foam we saw has these pin core holes, so, um, so that helps create airflow. And we also saw when we cut it open that the Avena foam has this convoluted underside. So those two things work together in that Avena foam, as we talked about, to create more airflow through the mattress, and that's going to give you an overall cooler experience than you might have on other mattresses containing memory foam. So net net, if you're concerned about heat issues, we actually think you're unlikely to encounter those types of issues on this mattress. So the next thing we're going to talk about is edge support. Um, now edge support may be an issue for you for a couple reasons. Number one is you may be someone who likes to sit on the edge of their bed to, for example, put your shoes on or tie them. Um, or the other reason is you may be someone who likes to or is forced to sleep near the edge of their bed for whatever reason. Maybe you get crowded out by pets or 
restless sleepers on the other side of the bed, for example. Um, so we do look at this as, an, uh, as another criteria. Now, all foam mattresses generally um, don't tend to be quite as good as mattresses that are spring mattresses that have particular features in place to uh, keep a firm edge. Um, and as you can see here, the Lisa is, is kind of no exception to that general rule. As I'm sitting on this edge, you can see how there's quite a lot of compression here where my body is. Um, now, it's not problematic per se. Um, I mean, I don't feel unstable sitting in this position, um, but if, if that's something that's a concern for you and you worry that you might, then it's just it's something that you might want to consider. Um, but that being said, as all foam mattresses go, I think it's worth uh, adding that, that the, the Lisa Edge is, is fairly strong. I mean, I can, I can sit here and, or lay here right on the edge and I don't feel any sensation of uh, rolling off or whatsoever. So that's a, a actually a, a strong indicator of um, a, a pretty good edge there. So the next criteria we're going to touch upon here is the ease of repositioning. And what we mean by this is how easy it is, is it to move around during the night and shift from one position to another. Now this is generally a concern for mattresses that contain memory foam because sometimes people report uh, feeling like they're rolling out of a hole that they created, for example. Um, so we wanted to make sure we touched upon this issue as it relates to the Lisa because Lisa does have some memory foam in it. Um, what we can report is that because of the Avena foam layer on top, the effect of the memory foam in this regard is generally mitigated. So I can roll quite easily from my back to my side, back to my back, and over to my side again. It's not um, maybe quite as easy as if this was an all latex mattress, for example, and there were no memory foam in it. But for most people, this is not going to pose any, any kind of a problem for repositioning during the night. So another criteria that's important to basically every mattress shopper is value and affordability. So we're kind of, to assess that, we're going to look at three things. We're going to look at what does it cost, what's in it, and how long do we think it's going to last. Um, in terms of what it costs, the queen size version of the Lisa mattress currently runs $890. In terms of what's in it, what you're getting for that, um, on the plus side, what you're getting is four inches of kind of premium materials on the top of the mattress. So that's a, that's a nice uh, amount of, of premium materials above that six inch um, foam core. Um, on the negative side, maybe uh, the, some of the materials, particularly the memory foam, are a little lower density. The, the memory, pound, memory foam is three pound density, which for memory foam is, is definitely on the lower side. The Avena foam is a 3.6 pound density foam, which is, which is definitely respectable for a latex-like material. Um, you certainly would find latex in that density. Um, and the base foam is a 1.8 pound, which is a fairly standard kind of middle of the road density for a foam mattress base. Um, so the materials are, are kind of okay, right kind of in the middle in general. Um, so I'd say overall, and then as far as how long it's going to last, I think, I think the materials are really the best barometer we have for that because Lisa as a company is only a couple years old. I mean, the oldest Lisa mattresses out there are probably still not yet three years old. Um, and in particular, that's an issue for Lisa because as far as we know, the Lisa is the only mattress that uses this Avena foam uh, uh, material. So we really don't even have benchmarks around how long Avena foam will last even from other brands. Um, so, but, but in general, if you sort of uh, take the presumption that it's a latex-like material and assume it's going to have similar longevity properties to latex, then that bodes well for it. Um, and so when we net all that out and look at the value of this mattress, uh, it feels like it is definitely a good value. Um, it is definitely um, uh, better than uh, what you might find in some, prop some beds that you would find in a nearby store. Um, but it's maybe not the absolute best value. Maybe that's not, you're not going to buy it because it's the absolute best value. You're probably going to um, buy it for other reasons, such as you know, the ones we've talked about earlier in terms of the feel and the comfort and uh, the other properties that make it a good match for you. So when you buy a mattress online uh, and you don't have an opportunity to try it first, a really important consideration uh, is the return policy. And Lisa, like many other online companies, has a very generous return policy to help make this an easier decision for you, um, which is that they 
let you try it in your house for 100 nights risk-free. And it's free delivery as well, so you're not going to be on the hook for the original delivery fee or anything. You're basically going to get all your money back if, in fact, you choose uh, not to keep the mattress. So that's certainly something to consider that kind of makes it a little easier to pull the trigger uh, when you're buying online. So just to sum up some of the things we've talked about here today, the Lisa is a very popular mattress, and with good reason. Uh, you can see here it looks great, it feels great, uh, and when you lay down on it, it's got a really unique feeling uh, on your body. The, the way the Avena foam creates this kind of bouncy uh, upper layer, and underneath that you have this more slow responsive memory foam. It's got a very unique feel to it, um, and it is even different from some of its other like relatively close online competitors. Um, so, so we really uh, enjoyed it a lot. Um, in general, it's also not surprising that it's been so popular since it does tend to suit a pretty broad swath of people down kind of that middle realm of, uh, of back support and pressure relief needs. Um, so, you know, some people who maybe it's not a great match for would be people who kind of don't fall in that middle range or over at one end of the spectrum or another in terms of like your weight or, or your body shape and sleep position like we talked about. Um, or perhaps uh, you're someone who just really enjoys that kind of pure memory foam experience like a Tempur-Pedic or what have you. You're not going to get that with the Lisa. Likewise, if you're someone who really enjoys that traditional inner spring experience, uh, this is not that either. But if you're someone who, for example, um, sleeps a little bit warm and enjoys a foam mattress experience, this is going to provide some options for you in terms of the temperature regulation that are going to be a little harder to find in other foam mattresses. Um, and we do think that the $890 price point in the Queen is competitive. So, all in all, we definitely think that the Lisa is a good option to consider. So if you've gotten to this point in the video and you've become convinced that the Lisa is the right mattress for you, that is great. And we're really glad that this video could help confirm that for you. And if you do choose to buy a Lisa, we really hope that you come back to goodbed.com and write a review of it so that millions of other mattress shoppers can benefit from your personal experience with this product. If on the other hand, you aren't sure yet whether this kind of Avena foam, memory foam combination that Lisa offers or just whether the Lisa mattress specifically isn't the right one for you, then what we would urge you to do is to go to goodbed.com and take our mattress match quiz, which you can find up in the header of any page of our website. Uh, the match quiz will walk you through all of the same criteria and considerations that we covered in this video and will ultimately show you the best matching products for you both online as well as in your local stores. Uh, in fact, if you go to the Lisa profile page on Goodbed, you can even uh, take the quiz and have it tell you your match score for this particular product. So that's all and thank you for watching and we hope you sleep well.